Procreate is a digital painting app that gives the feel of real-world drawing with the power and capabilities of digital art. But how do you use it? Hi, I'm Lauren from Envato Tuts Plus, and in this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to draw in Procreate. I will show you all of my favourite tools, as well as covering my full drawing process, from reference and sketching, to colouring, shading and finishing touches. In this video, I will be using some resources from Envato Elements, which is a huge library of digital resources, including photographs, fonts, brush packs, graphics and much more. There is no locking contract and you can cancel at any time. To begin this tutorial, we will need to find a reference photo. I'm going to be sourcing mine from Envato Elements, which has a huge library to suit every need. I'm going to filter my search to photos and then type in my keywords. I want to draw an elven girl, so I'm typing in elf girl. You can then scroll through the results until you find the photograph that you'd like to draw from. Once you've found your image, click on it and press the download button. This will save the image to your files app. From here, you just need to unzip the image and press the icon in the top right of the screen to save it to your photos app. Now it's time to create a canvas. Open Procreate and press the plus icon in the top right corner. Then press the plus icon in the top right of the new canvas menu to create a custom size. I'm going to be using a 3000 pixels by 3000 pixel canvas size. I find this works well for square pieces that are high quality whilst retaining a large amount of maximum layers. You can see the maximum layers for the canvas size at the bottom of your table. Then hit the orange done button to launch your canvas. Now let's look at using the layers panel. The panel can be found by tapping the double square icon in the top right corner of the screen. To create a new layer, tap the plus icon in the top right corner of the menu. You can switch the layer by tapping to select it. This determines the layer you'll be drawing on. If you keep drawing on a singular layer, you'll notice that all of your shapes will move together. You can move objects on a layer by tapping the arrow icon. If you would like to separate your lines, make sure to select a separate layer to draw on. You can now move your shapes separately from one another. Layers can be moved around by pressing and holding over a layer and dragging it. Moving a layer behind another will place that shape behind the layer above it. You can hide and reveal layers by tapping on the checkbox at the edge of each layer. Next, let's look at brushes. The brush library is open by tapping on the brush icon at the top of the screen. Here you will find a variety of default Procreate brushes organised into the categories shown on the left. There are a mixture of both traditional and digital style brushes as well as textures and stamps. To select a brush, simply tap on it and it will now be ready to use. The size of the brush can be adjusted by dragging the top slider to the left of the screen. Dragging the slider upwards will increase the brush size, while dragging it downwards will decrease it. You can save a brush size by holding the slider with one finger whilst tapping the plus icon on the menu that pops up with the other. Repeat this process to remove the marker. To select the save brush size, simply drag the slider over the marker. The bottom slider controls the opacity of the brush. The lower you drag the marker, the lower the opacity will become. You can also download custom brushes to increase your library. Envato Elements has a great selection, so let's check some out. First, filter the search to add-ons and type in the type of Procreate brushes you're searching for. I like to work with chalk brushes, so I'll be searching for these. You can then scroll through the results until you find a brush pack that suits your needs. I decided on this Procreate Chalk Brush Sketch Set. To download, open the brush set and tap the download button. This will download the brush to your files application. You will need to tap on the zip file to unzip it and then open the folder. Select the brush file and it will automatically be imported to your brush library. Your new brush set can now be found at the top of your brush library. Simply tap on it and select a brush to enjoy your new brushes. Now it's time to begin sketching. First, I'm going to open my reference photo. One way of doing this is to open the actions menu, tap on canvas and then turn on the reference switch. This will open a reference box and you can move this by holding and dragging the top of the box. You can use the canvas settings to use existing drawings on your canvas as a reference. This is helpful if you'd like to reference another part of your canvas while being able to zoom in on a different section. The face option allows you to take a reference photograph, which could be helpful if you want to recreate an expression. The image option allows you to import an image from your photos library. Here I'm adding the image I downloaded earlier. This allows you to work from a reference image above the canvas. To close the reference box, tap on the cross icon. Another method for working from a reference photo is to split the screen. This is my personal preferred method. Open your reference image, then swipe upwards from the bottom of the screen to open the shortcut menu. Tap and hold over the Procreate icon and drag it to the left of the screen. 
With a half split screen, some of the menu bar items are hidden, so I prefer to work in three quarter screen by dragging the divider in the middle to the right slightly. You can now use both applications simultaneously, allowing you to zoom and move around both parts of the screen. Now it's time to sketch. First, I'm going to map out the rough shapes of my drawing. I'm using an airbrush for this because I want to create loose guides. I begin with a circle for the head and continue to use shapes and loose lines to mark out the rough proportions of the drawing. I'm not going to add any detail at this point, I'm just marking where the main shapes and features will go. This will serve as a guide before I begin the next stage of sketching and add in more detail. Once this sketch is complete, I'm going to increase the size using the arrow tool set to uniform, which means the shape will hold its current proportions. Now it's time to create a more refined and detailed sketch layer. First, I'm lowering the opacity of my initial sketch to make it easier to draw over. To layer lower opacity, tap on your layer and drag the slider. I'm then creating a new layer above this to draw on and selecting the Chalk 05 brush from the pack I downloaded earlier. I'm going to edit this brush slightly by tapping on it to open the brush studio. You can change a variety of settings here. I'm increasing the streamline setting to maximum. This makes the brush create smooth lines and is very helpful when sketching as it steadies your outlines as demonstrated on the drawing pad. Press done to confirm your changes. I'm now going to begin to create my refined sketch with this brush. I create each separate element of my drawing on different layers to make them easier to edit, but you could draw on a single layer if you prefer to work this way. You can select multiple layers and group them by swiping each layer to the left and then tapping group in the top right corner of the menu. You can duplicate a layer by selecting it, swiping it over to the left and tapping the duplicate button. This will create a duplicate of that layer or group which can now be selected and moved. To flip or rotate a layer, select the arrow tool and tap on the rotation you would like to perform using the menu at the bottom. Here I tap to flip horizontally to reflect my layer. You can use the guidelines that appear whilst moving an object to help you align it. To erase, tap the eraser tool in the top right menu. This will now erase over any drawings on your selected layer. I like to flip my canvas regularly whilst drawing as it helps me to spot any issues with proportions that I might have missed. To do this, open the actions menu and tap flip horizontal or flip vertical depending on your needs. You can edit your eraser brush to create different erase effects using the brush library. To do this, tap the eraser and select the brush of your choice. I selected a grainy brush to fade out the beginning of the eyebrows. Now I'm going to finish up the rest of my sketch using the photo as a reference. Once I'm happy with this sketch, it's time to create the final line art. First, I'm going to group all of the sketch layers together by selecting them one by one and tapping group. I don't need these as separate layers anymore, so I'm going to flatten the group by tapping the layer and selecting flatten from the menu. This merges all the layers from the group into one. I'm then going to lower the opacity to make it easier to draw over and create a new layer above it. Now I'm drawing over the sketch with my line art brush to create the lines that will be used in the final drawing. You can skip this step if you don't use line art, or you could choose to do this at the end instead. I create each part on a separate layer to make it easier to recolor later. I want to erase parts of the dress that are covered by the flowers, so I'm going to create a layer mask on the dress layer by tapping the layer and selecting mask. This creates a mask above the selected layer that allows you to erase things on the layer, but as this mask can be switched on and off, the changes can be reversed at any time by switching off or deleting the mask. This is a great tool to use if you're unsure about permanently erasing something, or if you want to test out how it would look without risking losing anything on your original layer. Now that my line art is complete, I'm going to select and group all of these layers to keep them ready for later. I'm then going to duplicate this group and flatten it into one layer so that I can use this as a reference for adding in the flat colours. I'm then going to tap on this layer to open the blend modes. Blend modes can have different effects on the colours and opacities of your layer and how it interacts with other layers. These effects are more obvious with multiple layers containing multiple colours, but you can see how the modes are already changing my layer as I scroll through them. I'm going to be setting the layer to linear burn mode, which produces a darkening effect over the base layer. I'm turning the opacity of the layer down as I want to use it as a guide. The effects of linear burn are demonstrated here. As you can see, the guide layer becomes a darker version of the colour on the layer below, making it perfect for use as a guide. Increasing the opacity of the layer will increase the darkness of the lines. Before we begin to add our base colours, let's look at how to use the colours panel in Procreate. The disc is the first option on the menu for selecting colours. You can drag the swatch around the colour wheel to pick the shade, and then drag the swatch in the middle section of the wheel to control the depth. 
Next is the classic option. This contains settings to control the hue, saturation and brightness of the colour. These can be adjusted by dragging the three sliders and the depth of the colour can be edited by dragging the swatch around the square at the top. Next is the Harmony option, which can be used to find complementary colours. Dragging one of the swatches will automatically move the other three swatches into complementary colours for your selected swatch. Then we have the Values option, where you can input specific colour values for RGB or CMYK colour modes depending on the colour mode your canvas is set to. Finally, at the end of the menu you can find the Palettes option which contains saved colour swatches. To select a palette, simply tap on a swatch within that palette. To create a new palette, select your chosen colour and open the Palettes menu and tap the plus icon in the top right corner. There are a few options you can use to create palettes from. I'm going to select Create New Palette to make an empty one. To add swatches, simply tap on any grey empty square within the palette and your swatch will now be saved. Now let's add the flat colours. I'm selecting an ink liner brush so that the edges of my shapes will be slightly grainy. On a layer behind the guide layer, I'm going to start to outline the first shape, which is going to be her face. The most important thing here is to ensure there are no gaps in the outline. Once the shape is outlined, there are two ways of colouring it. You can either colour by hand if you prefer the look of this or enjoy this process, or to speed things up, you can use the colour drop tool. To do this, drag the colour swatch from the top right corner into the centre of your shape and keep the Apple Pencil held down. You can adjust the level of fill by dragging the pencil across the screen to adjust the colour drop threshold slider at the top. Now I'm going to draw the rest of the base colour shapes by creating new layers for each of them and using the same process. Keeping them on separate layers will allow you to edit the colours more easily if you change your mind and will also help when shading later on. Here you can see how my drawing is looking with all of the base colours filled in. Now it's time to add some shading. To begin, I'm going to create a new layer above the shape I want to shade, tap on the layer and select the clipping mask option. This creates a mask around the layer so that you can only colour inside the shape the mask is created on top of. I'm going to add some blush to my character, so I'm using a soft airbrush and shading under her cheeks. You can see how the colour is contained within the face shape. You can add additional clipping mask by creating a layer above the current mask and setting it to clipping mask. Clipping mask layers layered above or below each other will become masks of the same layer beneath them. You can colour pick any colour within your drawing to set your current swatch to this shade. To do this, hold your finger over any part of the drawing and the colour beneath will become selected. You can hold and drag your finger around until you find your desired shade. Now I'm going to show you how you can use blend modes to assist with shading and adding highlights to your drawing. I'm adding the eye and pupil colours as clipping masks over the eye base layer as I want to shade over all three and I'm creating another mask layer above these to shade on. I'm then going to select the eye colour and create a deeper and warmer version of it. This will be used as the base colour for my blend mode. Next I'm opening the blend mode menu and setting the layer to multiply mode. This mode darkens and increases the saturation of the colour the brush is set to as well as the base colour beneath this layer. I'm adding the shadow on top of the eyes and once I'm happy with this I can play around with the opacity to adjust the darkness of the shadow. Now I want to add some highlight, so I create another new clipping mask layer above the rest and this time set the layer mode to add. This brightens the base colour and can have a glowing or shiny effect at higher opacities. I also added light to the lips using this method, as well as the tip of the nose. To soften the nose highlight, I select the blend tool by tapping the hand icon in the top right menu and then I tap this again to choose the brush I want to blend with. You can use this tool to blend and smudge any lines or shapes within your selected layer. This is particularly helpful for artists wanting to mimic traditional art methods. I'm then going to continue to shade the drawing using these same methods and techniques. If you struggle to find good shading colours, here is a tip using the multiply blend mode. First, create a clipping mask above your layer and set it to multiply mode. Then, use the colour pick tool to select the base colour of the layer you're shading over and drag the colour wheel to a less saturated version of this colour. This should now have created a shading colour that complements the base layer and that can also easily be adjusted using the opacity slider to control the depth of the shadow. I'm shading the clothing using the same methods of creating clipping masks above the base layers and setting the layer to multiply mode. Now I'm done with shading, I've switched off the guide sketch layer and I'm dragging the group line art that I created earlier above all of the other layers and switching it back on. If you drew your line art on a single layer, you can still pretty easily recolour it. Set the layer to normal mode and then tap on the layer and select alpha lock. 
This will lock your brush within the shapes on the layer and allow you to colour over the lines. This can be a bit fiddly, but if you are low on layer space in your canvas, it can be a good option. If like me you drew your liner on separate layers, then you can now go through each layer and recolour the lines by creating darker versions of the base colours using the colour picker and dragging the swatch to fill them with the colour drop tool. Once all the line art is edited, my drawing is almost complete. Now it's time to add a simple background. I'm going to create a layer behind everything else and select my background colour. I can then drag the swatch into the background to fill the canvas. Next I'm going to draw a circle behind my character. To create a perfect circle, simply hold the pencil to the screen after drawing your shape and press the edit shape button that will appear at the top of the screen, then select circle. Your shape should now be in proportion, you can also do this for a variety of other simple shapes. I want to centre my circle, but as there are so many layers the guides are getting a little confused. To fix this, I want to flatten my character into one layer, so I'm going to select all of my layers and make a group. Before I flatten the layers, I want to make sure I have a backup of them. I can't duplicate the group due to the large number of layers on my canvas and the layer number limit, so I'm heading out of the canvas, pressing select and then tapping on my drawing to select it before pressing duplicate to duplicate my drawing and back up my layers. I can then go into the duplicated version and flatten the layers without worrying about losing them. I can now use the guides easily to centre my character and the circle behind her. I'm going to fill the circle using the colour drop tool. Adding a shape behind the character is a really easy way to help it stand out against the background. Now I'm going to select my character layer and add a special effect from the adjustments menu. I like a grainy effect on my drawing so I'm selecting the noise effect. I'm setting this to 3%, you can edit the percentage by dragging your finger across the screen. When I zoom in, you can see the effect that this has added, especially when I undo the effect so that you can see the difference. Let's look at making final colour adjustments. I'm going to select curves from the adjustments menu, which controls the levels of various colours within your drawing. To edit the levels, drag the lines to create a new point on them. You can instantly see the effects doing this on your selected layer. I don't usually like to edit these by much, but it can be a really helpful tool for quickly editing the tone of a drawing. Finally, it's time to export the finished drawing. Open the Actions menu and tap on the Share tab. You can now choose your preferred file type. I'm selecting JPEG and then pressing Save Image to add the file to my Photos app. And now we are finished. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more tutorials just like this one.